Now, in 2017, Activision and Sledgehammer Games released Call of Duty World War II. Now, this installment intended to return the beloved first-person shooter to its historical roots. And after years of futuristic settings and increasingly complex storylines, fans and critics alike were initially excited by the prospect of a return to the iconic World War II era. Now, despite its commercial success, the game was met with mixed to negative reviews from fans and critics. Several key factors contributing to this bad reception included perceived game play stagnation, lack of innovation, technical issues, and controversial design choices. Now going more into the gameplay stagnation and lack of innovation, this criticism was one of the more significant criticisms of World War II because it apparently lacked innovation in gameplay mechanics. The game was criticized for feeling too similar to previous entries, with many players feeling that it was simply another installment in the franchise without meaningful changes or improvements. While the return to a World War II setting was meant to provide a fresh perspective, many found that it ultimately relied heavily on cliches and tropes from previous World War II games. The single player campaign was noted for being formulatic with predictable story arcs, heavily scripted sequences, and an over-reliance on cinematic moments that left little room for player agency. Now, fans and critics argued that the campaign failed to introduce new gameplay elements or narratives that could set it apart from earlier titles like Call of Duty World at War or the original Call of Duty games from the early 2000s. Now, the multi player component is always a cornerstone of the Call of Duty, really it's the main selling point, but this faced major criticism as well. While Call of Duty World War II introduced some new features such as the War Mode, which attempted to bring objective based multiplayer gameplay to the series, these additions were seen as insufficient as they didn't evolve or revolutionize the multiplayer experience. Players found the overall design and feel of multiplayer maps to be uninspired. And the gunplay mechanics really lacked the feel that they had in previous installments. The return to a boots on the ground style of play, while initially welcomed, also revealed limitations in terms of mobility and player engagement. And at launch, Call of Duty World War II didn't help itself, as it was plagued by many technical problems that further diminished the overall experience of the game. You had server issues, connection problems, crashes that affected both single player and multiplayer modes, and these issues were particularly damaging given the game's heavy reliance on online multiplayer, which is again a significant draw for Call of Duty fans, probably the main draw. So the headquarters mode, which was a social hub designed for players to interact, complete challenges, and unlock rewards, was largely non-functional due to the server issues, which led to a frustrating experience for a lot of players. Now, this in turn negatively impacted the perception of the game as being rushed or unpolished, which tarnished its reputation and it made it seem like it needed more time in the oven, as a lot of the games nowadays do need. And another problem for many fans and critics was the game's use of microtransactions and its implementation of a loot box system. Now, although Call of Duty World War II was not the first game in the franchise to introduce these monetization strategies, it did so in a manner that was seen as intrusive and unfair by many players. Loot boxes containing cosmetic items, weapon variants, and other rewards were heavily emphasized, which was seen as an attempt to encourage players to spend additional money beyond the game's initial purchase price. And the way that these microtransactions were integrated into the game's design, where players could open loot boxes in the headquarters mode for others to see, was criticized because this promoted a pay to win mentality, meaning if you saw someone get something cool, you'd be like, oh, let me keep trying because I'll probably get something cool as well, which most of the time wasn't the case. This perception was further fueled by the fact that some weapons and some items in these loot boxes had stat boosters or advantages that could affect the gameplay. This created an uneven playing field that many saw as exploitative and detrimental to all the competitive integrity of the game, if there ever really is any in any culture. Call of Duty game. Now, while the game aimed to provide a more authentic and historical or historically grounded portrayal of World War II, many fans and critics found its narrative execution lacking. Some of the game's depictions were criticized for being overly sanitized or simplified, avoiding the more complex and real realities of war. While previous Call of Duty games had also taken liberties, World War II was noted for sidestepping many of the darker, more controversial elements of the conflict, which some felt was a missed opportunity to explore the gravity and the brutality of the war more deeply, especially in a time like 2017, where you could have really used this as a way to dive as deep as you could. Now, the storyline was also criticized for failing to develop the characters that were in it beyond surface level archetypes 
stereotypes, basically meaning that many of these characters fitted into a stereotypical mold, which we've seen in countless other war games, war films, war books, and anything to do with World War II. You know, this lack of character depth made it difficult for players to connect with or feel invested in the game's story. Now, one of the biggest problems with Call of Duty World War II is that it was overshadowed by another game in the same genre. And this was Battlefield 1, which released a year prior in 2016. Now, this game had already introduced a historical war setting that garnered considerable success. Battlefield 1 was set in World War 1, and it was praised for its innovative gameplay mechanics, dynamic multiplayer maps, and compelling narrative elements. This brought a fresh perspective to the historical conflict in video games. And if you compare that to Call of Duty World War 2, it kind of appeared as a less ambitious attempt, lacking the same level of creativity or risk taking that its competitor Battlefield 1 had already demonstrated. And as a result, it struggled to differentiate itself in a crowded market and ultimately felt like a missed opportunity to elevate the franchise to new heights. And you have to remember that Battlefield at this time was really giving Call of Duty a run for its money. It never surpassed it. It was never better in terms of maybe commercial success or as known, but it really was pushing it. Like right now, Battlefield isn't all that. Like Battlefield kind of just lost its step. But back then and those early, you know, 2010s, they were really giving Call of Duty a run for its money. So Battlefield was pushing Call of Duty tremendously. And you saw it specifically in 2016 and 2017 with Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty World War II. And so in conclusion, Call of Duty World War II failed to meet the expectations of fans and critics for several reasons, including a perceived lack of innovation in gameplay, numerous technical problems at launch, controversial microtransaction practices, and a narrative that was seen as uninspired and historically shallow. Although the game succeeded commercially, like all Call of Duties kind of do, it did not resonate with the community in the way that previous titles had. In the end, Call of Duty World War II serves as a reminder of the challenges faced when attempting to balance a return to a franchise roots with the need of innovation and forward momentum. But I will add this. Although this was more of a critique of Call of Duty World War II and why it wasn't as beloved as it was something that really interested me for a very long time. And when I played it again for the channel, I was able to think of all these things because it had been so many years since the game's release. But on a personal level, if you ask me, did you enjoy Call of Duty World War II? I absolutely did. I loved it. And although it had its flaws and in certain aspects, it could have dove deeper into certain topics, maybe with the Nazis, maybe with Hitler, maybe with the Jews and the Holocaust and really dive deeper into that. I enjoyed it for what it was. And I love the cinematics this is one of the most beautiful looking Call of Duties that I've ever seen in my life. The gameplay felt fun and smooth and powerful while I was playing it. The characters were good enough for me. For example, Red Daniels stood out as a good, good character. Rozu was a fun, quick little cameo that I thought was amazing and a great introduction to the game. Pearson was a difficult and broken character that almost got fixed by the end of it and I really enjoyed his relationship with Turner which Turner was absolutely amazing as well. These characters really brought the story together and it made the story feel like a story of brotherhoods standing together against the greater evil and the brotherhoods coming on top after great, great sacrifice. Call of Duty World War II may not have been the game that many of us wanted back in 2017. It may not have been the game to beat all World War II games, but it was a good game with a good story and one that has a special place in my heart. <laughs>